welcome to another episode of I Am Nano. Putting the I in I Am Nano, I'm your host, Irfani. And I am your other host, Putting the M, Monica. Today, we will be talking about using nanofibers to improve the performance of ELISA-based sensors. ELISA, wow, I always thought that was such a beautiful name. Now, it is an acronym, and it stands for Enzyme-Linked Immunosorbent Assay. This bioassay is often used to quantify biomolecules using antibodies that are immobilized on those plastic microplates. Mm-hmm. And I did so many of these assays before. The whole assay took approximately five hours to finish. <sighs> yeah, um, I did the sandwich for my assay, and so it involves so many incubation steps, making the full entire process take so long. Anyway, so ELISA assays are commonly done in the lab, and, but as I mentioned, it's very time consuming and you will need an experienced person to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And it would be really great if these ELISA assays, that if they could be done outside the lab, and that I think that would be very beneficial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So scientists have been working on using nanofiber membrane sensors that can be used outside the lab. And in this study by researchers from UC Davis, um, published in ACS Sensors back in April, investigated and developed a highly sensitive nanofiber-based ELISA sensor to detect antibiotics, specifically fluoroamphenicol. Wow. Now let's talk about the nanofibers themselves. How do we make them? So these are made of polymers that undergo a process called electrospinning where the polymers are drawn out from a syringe using electric force. The produced fibers are nanofibers. So they are like the fibers on your shirt, just at the nanoscale. Mm -hmm. And the researchers here use polyvinylical ethylene. Now, to make an effective nanoporous membrane, the pores must be large enough for biomolecules to penetrate through and they have to also be hydrophilic, so molecules in the solution can enter the pores. If the pores are hydrophobic, the molecules will not be attracted to the pores, just like how water and oil do not mix. And now imagine this nanofiber membrane like a bundle of yarn. There will be pores that are inaccessible from the outside, blocked on one end, and ones that can actually allow molecules to go through. The sizes will vary, but overall, they must be large enough to allow things to go in and out. Mm -hmm. And so they did this by increasing the concentration of the polymer solution to 12% weight, which increased the pore size to 1,000 times larger than the antibody size. And with this large pore size, a fluorescently labeled as molecule was able to diffuse and reach steady state much faster than the membranes with smaller pore size made from lower polymer concentration. Now for its hydrophilicity, they used a molecule called NN disoxinamidyl carbonate, and that's abbreviated to DSC. Thank goodness, because I don't want to be saying that the rest of the episode. No. <laughs> this serves as both linker molecule that can covalently link the antibody to the polymer and make the pores more hydrophilic. The researchers found that the membrane with 10% DSC was hydrophilic enough as measured through water contact angle testing without exhibiting polymer swelling. And subsequently, this component, this molecule, was used for the final membrane development. You know, I thought the water angle contact test was genius when I first learned about it. It's so simple and effective. All you need to do is measure the contact angle of a water droplet the smaller the contact angle, the more spread out the water droplet is, the more hydrophilic the surface is. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Such a simple and elegant technique. Anyways, when the researchers immobilized a fluorescently labeled antibody, they found that the antibodies were able to homogeneously immobilize through the nanofiber membrane at 200 milligrams per liter. Now, higher concentrations 
do not work since there's only a limited amount of sites that the antibodies can actually sit in. The diffusion coefficient of antibodies through the membrane with large pores is 10 times higher than the ones with smaller pores. And that are those are made up from six to 8% polymer concentration. Wow, so the process really does matter. It's really important. And finally, they tested the performance of the standard membrane as a competitive ELISA assay. Uh, they use a camera phone to capture images of the membrane and determine the concentration using RGB analysis technique. The ones with large pore sizes show higher sensitivity compared to the ones with smaller pores. And overall, they not only improve the sensitivity, but also decrease the limit of detection by 20 times more than the commercial ELISA. Oh, wow. That is amazing. I hope we can achieve such analytical techniques outside the lab. You know, you can use it in doctor's offices, hospital bedsides, ambulances, and so much more. And I mean, they have to sort of test it, but it's really promising. I'm really excited actually while I was learning about this because I'm working on a man of course conducted 3D surface too. So this study is very, very insightful for me. Alrighty, that is all the data for today. Take care. And stay curious.